I wonder sometimes, what would I have done 2,000 years ago if Jesus would have been born when I would be alive? Would I be a Herod who gets threatened by Jesus? Would I be a Pharisee who has all the information about Jesus? Or would I be a wise man who is not threatened, who is not satisfied with the information, but who wants to see Jesus face to face? As I ponder on this question, I think I have an answer on what I would do with Jesus. And the answer I have also for you. I know what you would do with Jesus if he would have been born today. Do you know what you would do with Jesus if he would be born today? Exactly the same thing that you do with Holy Spirit right now. Which is for most of us, absolutely nothing. The second greatest event on this earth is not Jesus being born. That was the first greatest event and most people were completely indifferent to it. They were satisfied with knowing about Jesus and very few were interested to chase him, to find him, to experience him, to worship him and then disciples to give him their life. But today there is another event that is happening right in front of your nose. And this is the event where Jesus said, another like me, just like me, but another one is coming. Come on now. In fact, he is my father. The reason why Holy Spirit is Jesus' father is because the Bible says that Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. The meaning he is even going to be greater than me. The reason why is because he will be in many places at the same time. He will not be lodged in Jerusalem. He will not stay in Israel. He can be closer to you than ever before. And my friends, I have a news for you. He is here right now. Another one is coming and he has came. My question to you today and this question I present to me as well. Am I like a Pharisee Pentecostal? Because see, we Pentecostals, we Charismatics, we, we have this feeling like Holy Spirit belongs to us. Like Holy Spirit has special connection with our denomination because we got the tongues figured out. We sometimes feel like Pharisees. We have all the information about the Holy Spirit and sometimes you find the Pentecostal Christians, they speak in tongues and they have the information. They walk around saying, He is ours, the way Jewish rabbis were saying Messiah our King but have no power have no signs no wonders have no deliverances have no healings nothing supernatural is happening with Pentecostals except the fact they have more information and they speak in tongues and why is that because the Holy Spirit does not belong to Pentecostals he belongs to people who are hungry and who are willing to get up and seek an encounter with Him. Whether they are Baptists, whether they are Catholics, whether they are Presbyterian, who say, God, I want to see you. I am hungry for you. Holy Spirit wants to be sought, pursued. I want us as a church an encounter with Holy Spirit is this, is that what I read in the prophets, in the scriptures, I see in my life. Pharisees read it, wise men saw it. I want to not be a Pharisee who reads about and never sees that. See, Jesus was not planted in some planet Mars. He was within their reach. Holy Spirit is not somewhere in some other country. He is within your reach. He is here right now. And your hunger and your desperation will push you out, you're out of your pharisaicism into an encounter with God. Let 2019 be a year of the Holy Spirit. Let this be a year of wanting no Holy Spirit. Not just knowing about the Holy Spirit but knowing Him personally. Knowing Him intimately and knowing Him passionately. Come on somebody. So an encounter is God wants us to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. 
God wants us to meet the Holy Spirit and God wants us to walk with the Holy Spirit. Their encounter wasn't big. Their encounter was with a baby. Like if I'm thinking it would be pretty disappointing if you went to see a king and found a toddler. Like you're looking at your gifts, you're like, you know what, I'll take him back to my kids. <laughs> Never mind. You're thinking about taking a picture, you're like, how's that gonna king? I, what, am I gonna bow to a baby? It, 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 this encounter did not look like the encounter that Moses had when the mountain was full of flame and Moses came, his face was shining and the two tablets. This encounter was not like other men who had where the fire of chariots showed up. This encounter was not such where there was voices and thunderings. This encounter was, was, was unique because it was so small. But wise men encountered someone bigger than any other man ever encountered in their life. Though it was smaller, it was bigger. And so what I want to encourage you right now is that when you begin to see God for an encounter, you will have it. But never be disappointed if it comes in small size. If it comes in something that you, you felt the Holy Spirit and people describe it, you're like, well, my mind was, was like this, but it was real, but it was, it was like this. I just, I felt the fire of God. I felt this sense of that He is real, He is with me. I did, it didn't, it wasn't anything like super, it was, it was small. The reason why God gives you a small encounter because he doesn't want it to be the only one. He wants it to be the first one. He hopes to stir up an appetite that you come for more. Unfortunately this is where us and wise men have to part ways right now because wise men got one small encounter. They gave all they had. They worshiped Jesus. They were instructed by a dream and they never came back for another one. They never came back to visit Jesus when he was 12. They never came back to visit Jesus when he was 30 and the, like a dove came upon him. They never came back to visit him at 31 when he walked on water and when he multiplied bread. They never came to visit him at 33 when the veil was torn apart and the dead man became alive and Jesus rose from the dead. They only had one encounter. But I believe as hungry generation, if we have an encounter with God, it will change us. But if we have encounters with God, it will change our world. And I'm ready for an encounters with God. I want to go from glory to glory. What about you? I want this year not to be a year where you only remember what God did at 16. Where you only remember what, what God did at 24. Or what God did a few years ago when you got baptized in water or baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want 2019 to be your best year with God. Best year with Holy Spirit your best prayer life to be in 2019, your best fasting life to be in 2019, your best giving to be in 2019, your best year with God to be in 2019. Can somebody say amen? I want you to rise to your feet. Let this year be the best year in your encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know what Jesus called Pharisees? People who didn't have curiosity about him when he was young became the critics of him when he became mature. If you have no curiosity for the Holy Spirit, in a matter of five, six years, you will be the biggest critic of what he's going to do. It's the curious that stay sane. It's the curious. People who are fascinated, not familiar. People who are not just happy that they can explain it, but they're not content until they can experience it. People who don't just say, wave it and say, this is written, but say also this is written and I see how, I know how it works in my life. I want us to be those people. In this coming year, when Jesus rebuked the Pharisees when he was on this earth, he called them tombs. See tombs, tombs are places where life used to be. It's the places that have people that used to have life. I don't want us to be tombs in 2019. We remember good old days. We remember the miracles of the past. We remember God's experiences with the past. I want us in 2019 to be temples. We don't hold, we don't hide that which used to be alive. We host someone who is alive. The Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, we want an encounter with you. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel 
and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.